But one matchless moment was still to come. It came when things were going badly, when it was time for the guns to go, and to go fast if they were to escape being captured by the enemy. But the guns could not move until the limbers and horse teams came up to trail them away. It was Jimmy who had taken the order to the transport, waiting with the ammunition wagons in the shelter of the village a quarter of a mile away. Now he was back, breathless and excited, waiting for them to appear. The infantry had been pushed back. They were close in front now, firing on a mass of German soldiers whose ragged ranks faltered occasionally in their withering fire, and then surged on like an incoming tide. Behind the racket of the firing, Jimmy listened, fascinated to the voice of their officer, steady and cool as any heroic character in one of his well-thumbed books. He was saying, at 400, at 350, at 300, the rifles blazed, but still the Germans came on. They were getting nearer and nearer, and for the first time I began to feel rather anxious and frightened. They weren't an immediate mass anymore. You could actually pick out details, see them as individual men coming on and coming on. And the officer, still as cool as anything, was saying, at 250, at 200, and then he said, 10 rounds, rapid! And the chaps opened up, and the Germans just fell down like logs. I've never seen anything like it. The discipline, the fire discipline of those troops. I've never forgotten that. I was so impressed. As a boy of 16, I was simply astounded. I thought, what a marvelous army we have. The attack was completely repulsed, probably not for long, but it was long enough for us to get the guns away. It saved us.